In this video, I will show you how to set up your phone in the right way so that it's not draining your energy and time anymore, but rather becoming your best productivity companion ever. You are using your phone every day, but most likely in the wrong way. Just look at your screen time statistics that will most likely tell you that you're using your phone way too long and for the wrong purpose, mainly losing time on social media. So let me show you how you can turn this around and make your phone a tool that helps you to boost your productivity without taking away the pleasure and joy of playing with it from time to time. In fact, there are just three areas you need to take care of. First, we need to ensure that your phone is cleaned up and organized, such that you are not going to be tempted to procrastinate by checking random apps that you have not used in a long time but are still installed on your phone. I mean, don't we all have those legacy apps on our phones that we downloaded at some point, used maybe once or twice and are now just clogging our phones? Or there's those apps that we pull up and check if we have gone through all of our other ones already. To make sure those apps cannot trigger us anymore in the future and distract us from the actual work that we need to get done, just delete them. Go through all of the screens and folders on your phone and don't be shy of getting rid of old stuff. In case you really need an app going forward, you can always go back and download it. Just remember, the fewer apps you have, the less you can check and waste your time. Now, Having decluttered your phone, it's time to organize it. To get the most out of your phone and time and energy, it's crucial to have structured your apps in a way that enables you to be less distracted, work more focused, be less triggered and access whatever you need in the least amount of time. Properly organizing your phone is a whole other story, but in short, it's all about structuring your remaining apps in a logical way and making the most important ones easily accessible, for example, on a nicely organized home screen. This will help you to have an immediate access on what's important and keeps other less important or rather draining and distracting apps like a lot of social media or entertainment apps out of sight on the second or third screen. Having decluttered your phone, it's time to limit distractions because it does not help if you have gone from 54 apps down to maybe 19, but have only deleted the ones that have never been distracting you. This might mean that the number of notifications and pop-ups you're getting is still the same because they all come from those 19 most important and remaining apps. Now you have two main options to limit the number of notifications you're getting, but I would recommend doing both. The first one is to block all notifications from apps. Doing so, you will not receive any notifications anymore, such as having received a WhatsApp message, an email, or a notification about a tweet from a person you're following on Twitter. To turn notifications off on Android phone, go to settings and notifications. There you can select to see all apps and choose to block the app's notifications. It might become a bit easier to block all notifications and badges if you think about what those notifications do to you. Basically, they take away your self-determination because they pull you out of your workflow or focus and tell you that something else has just now literally popped up and requires your attention. So it's not you anymore who decides what to focus on, but your phone dictates what's the most important thing at that time. And to keep your willpower and focus, I recommend also getting rid of the app icon badges, which are the small red circles on top of an app icon that indicate how many messages or pieces of information are waiting for you in that app. To turn them off, go to settings again, notifications, to advanced settings, and if you scroll down, you will be able to turn off icon badges. This leaves you without any visual triggers that might put additional stress on you over the course of the day, since you will always be pulled to those apps and notifications. Uh, by the way, if you want to get more practical productivity tips and tricks, make sure to sign up for my free newsletter to which you'll find the link in the description below. And now it's time to set your focus. With an organized phone, without any distractions, there's no excuse anymore to not be a lot more productive, right? 
But having completed the previous steps does not mean that you cannot access your social media or other rather distracting apps anymore. And that's what you need to take care of as well. In fact, there are three ever more radical ways of creating a focus zone. The least radical is that you mute your phone so that you won't hear any more calls. That's a simple solution, but might hinder you from receiving calls from specific important people. That's why I would rather recommend turning the do not disturb mode on. You can do that via settings, notifications and do not disturb. You can set different schedules and also specify exceptions. For example, certain calls, messages or conversations, alarms and sounds or apps that you would still like to get notifications from. But since we have turned off all notifications beforehand, this is not so relevant in contrast to making exceptions for when important people call you. Now, the most radical way of getting into a flow state is to set a focus mode. This blocks the usage of all apps except for the ones you define you want to use in your focus mode. So for example, if you want to define a focus mode for work time, you can go to settings, digital well-being and parental controls and focus mode. Add certain apps that you want to use while focus mode is enabled or started right away. For example, if you need your email program, a notepad and maybe your calendar for work, these could be the apps that are enabled, whilst all others will be blocked during that time. To disable focus mode, you turn off this setting via your quick settings or by tapping end focus mode in your well-being settings. In particular, if you have difficulties keeping your hands off certain apps, the focus mode is a really great tool that helps you to channel all your attention to the most important and actually required apps for certain tasks, as well as might help to break up bad habits. But only provided if you're using the right apps for maximum productivity. And to be honest, I believe there's not much that you need. I would even go that far and say most often you are a lot more productive by using less productivity apps than the other way around. As I mentioned in one of my previous videos, which I'll link below, I believe there are just three tools or apps you need for maximum productivity. Without surprise, the first I recommend is a note-taking tool that helps you to gather quick notes or capture ideas you have come across. I am using Notion since it's super user-friendly, pages can be shared with others and you can use it both in desktop or mobile. In addition, I need my email program, which is Outlook, to have all my email accounts synchronized in one place to be able to answer emails or draft messages. And there's Todoist, my to-do list app that helps me to stay organized throughout the day or weeks. Here I've listed all my tasks, be they one-off or recurring ones, and I've shared some of them with others so we can collaborate and have full transparency on what is going on. Once you have selected your most commonly used work apps, which could be the same as mine, but also could be similar ones like Gmail, Evernote or ClickUp, you can set them to be accessible in your focus mode. One thing you need to make sure, however, is that your apps, just like Notion, have a mobile and a desktop version that is always synchronized. Otherwise, you will run into problems if you are working on or with your phone and want to pick up some work on your computer, which might not be in sync. I also mentioned earlier that properly organizing your phone is a whole other story and not necessarily an easy task if you want to get it right. So check out this video where I'll show you how to finally organize your phone so you'll never take more than a second to find what you're looking for. 